All right, the Genesis, Riviera, whatever you want to call it. Just like last week, if you don't know the course already, go figure something out about the course. I'm not here to tell you about the course, but how you need to hit it far. You need to be good on the long par fours. Get excited about pars like the birdies on some of these holes. I don't need to tell you that. Someone else can do that. You don't know? Go find that out somewhere else. We're here to talk about the names on the betting board, as they call it. Top of the board, DJ. 6.25 to 1. Couldn't have just done 6 or 7? No one cares about the extra .25. It doesn't make a difference. He was 4 to 1 last week, and he withdrew. Now he's still only a barely over 6 to 1. The guy's that good. Doesn't matter the field. Best form here. Best skill. Best course history. Dude's got it all. He's probably going to win. Probably going to make the rest of your bets this week useless. So don't bother making too many. Don't bother having a card with 16 names on it. Because Dustin's going to ruin it for you, most likely. And you can barely even bet him. Because 6 to 1 in golf, not that fun. Right? You get one outright a week, one winner of a tournament a week, 6 to 1. Come on. And after that, you got Rory and Rom sharing 12 to 1. Rom makes sense. Rory, I don't like that. You know, he's not bringing the results like he used to. He's bringing the results of an 18 or a 22 to 1 golfer. He's not bringing you the results of a 12 to 1 guy. That's Rom. Rom's doing that. Rom's barely ever outside the top 10. Dude's getting 7th, 2nd, 3rd. And very rarely you see him pass 10. And if you do, it's like 13, 14. I guess Rom's always in the mix. You're in the mix that much, you win You win golf tournaments. It's just how it is. Xander, 15 to 1. Betting it. Just kidding. We're not betting Xander at 15 to 1. It doesn't make any sense. The guy doesn't win. Not lately, anyways. Kind of like Rom, he's always in the mix. You think eventually he's going to get one, but at 15 to 1, I don't trust it. JT, 15 to 1 as well. Good course history, great golfer. Been a little lackluster since the Tournament of Champions, okay? Since he got hot mic'd. I know he's making, making a little more focus on rehabilitating his image, but he's just not playing that great. So 15-1, to 1, I don't love it this week. Prime JT, yeah, that'd be great. Got him playing at his peak, that'd be great. Right now, no thanks. Two better options, Cantley 18-1, to 1. Bryson 18-1. to 1. Cantley's kind of a killer. He's always a reasonable bet for a win. The guy just wins. He's a great golfer. Kind of does everything well. And then Bryson. The nice thing about Bryson is his game either shows up or it doesn't. So if it shows up, he's live to win every time. And if it doesn't, I mean, there goes your outright bet. Big deal. Second place, 10th place, 30th place, miscut doesn't make a difference. I mean, he's 18 to 1, but really... He's either going to be in the mix, in the top five, or he's going, to be, you're, he's going to be out of it right away and you're going to know it. So that's all the sub-20s. And at 24 to 1, you got Brooks. I like this bet. You know I like Brooks. A couple things. He doesn't usually play here, but he is this year. I don't know what the reason is. Don't really care. The golfer's here on the golf course. What does it matter why? Right? They're always going to try to win. This would be a big statement win for him after his last win. Kind of showed he's back. Now it's a big boy field. Hey, Brooks loves a good statement win, and this would be a statement win in a good field. And you got the DJ correlation. Generally, places Dustin plays well, Brooks plays well. And Dustin plays pretty well here. So Brooks, irons look like they're firing. I mean, he should suit the course. Long bomber. Get it on the fairway. Make some pars, tough course, major style. This is perfect for Brooksy. I think that's the first bet I'll make here. And then we got Finau, 27 to one. This guy's always in the top five. Eventually you think he's gonna click for a win. And unlike Xander who's 15 to one and Rom who's 12 to one, he's 27. And you're making some money at 27, so that's not bad. And then at 34, I think I'm gonna bet both of these guys. We got Hoffman and Morikawa. So Hovland, never played here before, but what we've seen of him, long par fours, long irons. 
Hey, really good to be straight and on the fairway, obviously. This is a great golf course for him, I think. I mean, you don't know till you see the guy, but it makes sense. So I'm betting Hovland 34. And then Morikawa, he's not as long, but his long irons are as good as anybody in the world. And this guy's just a badass winner. He just wins golf tournaments. When you get a guy who wins golf tournaments at 34 to 1, yeah, you usually bet those guys. That's where you win money. Then you got Berger, Matsuyama, Scott. I'm not betting any of these guys. Scott plays the course really well. He's been on, kind of on and off this year. I've been on him early. Irons are great. Potter sucks. Irons are shitty. Potter's okay. Hey, buddy, just match it all up once. Can't do it. Matsuyama, he's just not the same guy anymore. He hasn't been for like a year. So they keep giving you Hideki at these numbers. I think he's like 39. That's tough. And then Berger just won. Give him a break. Take a pause on the moneymaker, Dan Berger. Next, we got Jordan Spieth, 49 to 1. I'm tempted for the for the laugh, you know? Jordan Spieth, we'll talk about this with a couple other guys. When he's on his game, he can win anywhere. Because when you're a guy with a great short game, you can win anywhere. Right? Birdie fests. But these tough long courses where everybody's going to miss a bunch of greens. Yeah, if you can scramble better than everybody else, maybe your irons don't need to be the best. Maybe you don't need to be as far, because you can make up for it in other ways, and he can do that. If he's truly back. And then we got your crew of guys after 50 to 1. Now this isn't a week to take some bombs like we did last week. There's only one guy past 100 to 1 that I'm even thinking about. There's only a few guys past this, but the feature bet of the week is in this section. We'll get to him last. So you got Neiman 54 to 1. That's a great fucking bet. 54 to 1, kind of Hovland style. You know, he probably should be about the same number as Hovland. Same, similar players, long, accurate, good long irons. 54 to 1 doesn't make a ton of sense with Hovland sitting at 34. Then we got Carlos Ortiz, 79. The guy just puts his way to the to the wins. Okay? He's playing awesome. He's playing better than a 79 to 1 golfer. And he's he's on the top of the leaderboard all the time. And then you look how he does it. He's, the guy is putting insane. And he puts really well on shitty pole grass, which I think is what we got here. Can't even remember. It doesn't matter. Right? And he can get hot with the irons. And if he does, he's knocking the birdies in. So Ortiz is a good one. We got Kokrak at 99. Peak Jason Kokrak at his best. Fits this course really well. Only question is, are we going to get that guy? I don't know if peak Jason Kokrak is right now. He won a little bit ago. Kind of tailed off since. I don't know that the signs are there that he's back. So if it was the best Jason Kokrak, I'd like it. But it, this version of him, I don't know. I don't think he's got it. And we got two more before we get to the feature. 99 to 1. Cam Smith. Kind of like Spieth. Cameron Smith can win anywhere because what does he have going for him that not a lot of guys do? Elite short game. Elite around the green. Elite putting. So it doesn't really matter if he's not as long as some of these guys. Or if his irons aren't as dialed in. Because he can out-putt them and he can out-scramble them. So when they get in trouble and they're making bogey, he's getting in trouble and he's making par. So that's his path to win. Around the green. Put your ball sack off. That's how he wins, and he can do it. So 99 to 1 is not bad. Now 149 to 1, our only sub, or our only bet past 100, our guy, Cam Champ. 149. Now, he's never made the cut here. Thought he'd play really well this year, and he's not playing really well. But out of anybody down this low, he's the one guy that you can look at and say he can beat anybody in this field if he's on. Right? He's putted so bad for like six months. I think he's gained putting like one or two times. And it's been bad. It's not like he's losing one or two strokes. He's losing three or four. So that doesn't inspire a lot of confidence in me. Hey, but he's long. You'd think he would fit the profile of somebody who plays well here, but he's missed a cut every time. So it doesn't make a lot of sense. But at 149 to 1, you like to have one deep bomb on the card and Cam Champ's our guy. So now the feature bet. I talked about him last week, bet him last week. And I said, though, 
That's not his week. This week is his week. All right, so the game's coming around. Played really well last week. Played well the week before and well the week before. We've been putting pretty poorly, but that came around a bit last week too. Now we're getting to a course that fits him better. It's Max Homa at 79 to one. I was really hoping with this field I'd see 100, 110, 120 on his name. But my local's a smart guy. He fucking knows. He knows that I'm not, that if he puts Max Homa at 150, I'm jamming him with the bet of the year. So he gave me 79. And I'm taking that bet. Hey, if I only make one bet this week, it's Max Homa to win, 79 to one. And I'm gonna bet a few other, a few of these other guys. Kind of mentioned who they're gonna be. But Max Homa's the dude this week. His irons are ridiculous right now. I mean, even not, and even last week he missed a few shorties. Everybody does a pebble. But he played really well here last year. He likes the course, clearly. He putt really well here historically. No idea if that's gonna carry over. He putt pretty well last week. So Max Holm is 79 to one. This is the spot, right? Kind of like when we talked about Tony Finau a few weeks ago at Torrey. Like that's as good of a spot as it got for Tony. I think he was 18 or 22 to one or something, or maybe even lower, maybe it was even worse. But with Max Holmo, we're talking about the same thing here. Playing really well, really good form. Coming to a place he's got good history at, right? Because he's explained why he's played well here. He knows he plays well here. He knows this course fits him. He's smashing it off the tee lately. He's hitting it far. Now he's smashing a little wild every once in a while, which is costing him. He's getting into trouble with the double bogeys. But when he hits that on the fairway, he is crushing his iron right next to the hole every time. So this is a spot play for Max Homa. It's as good as it's going to get. If you're not going to win now, you're probably not winning this year. And it's a tough field, and that sucks. Right? Like a guy like Max Homa, you want to see him get to the course he's going to play well at. You want to see a couple big names, but not a ton. But this is one of the best fields we're gonna see all year. But I think he's gonna do it. Max Homa, 79 to one. Take it and run, good luck.